Draymond for three with three on the clock. He hits it from the left sideline. No step, no play. How about Dre? I knew I wanted to play somewhere. I didn't know it would be the NBA. And seven years later, that was the end. Now I am the radio color analyst. I work alongside Tim Roy, who's a play-by-play -play man, R.C. Davis, who's our producer, and we bring you the action on the radio. I just love sports in general. I've always loved to play basketball and after high school. I got recruited by Arizona, UNLV, Clemson, uh, but Arizona just seemed seemed right. Arizona was as I thought it was going to be. Coach Olsen was on me all the time, but I don't know if I would have played in the NBA without him just constantly on me and pushing me. Steve I met there and Steve and I have been great friends ever since. Knew he'd be a coach one day. He just knew it. He was a natural leader. He's always had that ability to communicate and you trusted what he was saying and believed what he was saying. Met my wife there, Lori. We've been married for, let me make sure I get this one right, uh, <laughs> going, on, going on 30 years now. Some of the best things that have come uh, uh, in my life have come from going to Arizona. That means 19 to 7 in the third quarter. Eventually, I went to camp with the Warriors, and just a great group of guys. The most fun I had in the NBA was with Golden State. Rick Welch. I remember meeting him one day, and he asked me if I'd like to do radio. Uh, come on and be the uh, color commentator for the team. I go, yeah, I'd love it. It'd be uh, so much fun uh, to call games for a team that I played for. And then it became even better when Steve became the head coach. And look at the team I get to call the games for. I mean, it's a historic team. I'm probably watching three Hall of Famers in Draymond, Clay, and Steph. I mean, these are some of the best basketball players on one of the best teams in the history of the game. I'm sitting at home watching a Giants game one night, and everybody else had gone to bed. So I'm, I'm down there by myself. And all of a sudden, I get the, this sharp pain in my shoulder blades. And it was just the weirdest sensation. And then I started getting this pain in my temples. So Lori, my wife, was laying up in bed. And I go up there and I laid next to her. And I said, you know, I don't think, I think something's wrong. And she looked at me and, and saw that I had, you know, sweating. And she said, we should go to the hospitals. So we got there and they ran some tests. And finally, they figured out what it was. Uh, it was it was my aorta? And I remember they take me in, and I knew right away I was going to have surgery. It took me a while because they had to do three more procedures because I'd get up and walk. The first time in the hospital, they asked me to walk, and I felt fine. But then after like 25, 30 seconds of walking, I felt like I'd run 40 miles. It was tough. I mean, I, I ran my whole life. I, I was always active to not being able to do anything, but I knew eventually they would figure it out. It's like, if I need a three-pointer, I'll give the ball to Steph Curry. I'm assuming he's gonna make it. <laughs> Although he shoots 40% from three, I was hoping their percentages would be a little better than that. They finally got the last procedure done, and I was able to walk around the block, and man, I was just crying. I was like, oh my gosh. My daughter has a picture of me right before my ambulance ride to, to Stanford. And I asked Haley, I go, get out your phone. So Haley gets out her phone, and I gave her the two thumbs up like this. <laughs> and she still has that picture of me today. I mean, I knew that this was serious, but I also knew there was nothing else I could do. For me, it's always a time for, for laughter. And more than sports, Doing this for me is a way to get people to, to laugh and smile and, and have a good time.